my mission is to learn so that I can spread that, that, that uh, understanding of not my concept about things, but what we discover about nature on a daily basis. This has allowed me to open many hearts, including mine, so that the love flows between the people that I'm talking to, and that's all the people that are behind that camera, and also the people that I love, that, I'm not, that are not here right now, but they are, there's absence in the presence, and there's presence in the absence. And I got a lot of these people with me, including the ones that have transcended. Why? Because we are all energy. And this is about the energy. And water is energy, and water is life, and energy is life. And therefore, energy moves. And when it moves, it doesn't have legs to move. It has to spin in order to move. And we got two types of spin blending one. Like we got ten fingers, we don't. We only have five blend in one. And this concept of the ten fingers comes from the point that people are very square in their thinking, mm -hmm. thinking that this is what I see, that's what it is. And I got news for everybody out there, because our senses, especially the sight, is very deceiving. And you can hear that saying, never ever judge a book by its cover. That means you've got to read it. That means you've got to do something with it, so that you can approach it in the best possible way for you and get whatever message you want from it for you. And then you can give it away. I had a dream and many dreams. And this is like Martin King, Luther King once said, I have a dream, and now his dream has come true. Okay. However, the dream that I had was very significant. This was many years ago when I was in Australia practicing as a clinician. And uh, for three consecutive nights, I had the same dream. And the funny thing about the dream is that it was about mathematics and not only mathematics, they were very precise equations that keep on repeating themselves throughout th uh, three consecutive nights. So by the time I hit the fourth day after the third dream, I said to a friend of mine, Jana, I have dreamed about this three times. And she said, let's plot it and see what you get out of it. So we did, and we were in a hospital in the cafeteria, and I remember we were serviette and draw the equations. Mm -hmm. And then we start putting the whole thing together as to what the equations represent. And at that time, I got something very special. The dream was not as complex as this. It was very simple. But it gave us the opportunity to talk about this. This is what now is known as the quantum morphic field. Mm -hmm. A morphic field is part of the space-time matrix that combines with something that we know now exists, and that is gravitational waves, first described by Albert Einstein back in 1905, and never proven until the 16th of February, 2016. This was done by researchers at the University of Columbia in New York, under, guided on their Brian Greene's group. And this is just amazing, because they demonstrated that these gravitational waves play a major role in space-time matrix. So if you were to take everything away from the world, everything, including the air, you will end up with emptiness. And that emptiness is a matrix filled with energy. This is what people might have referred to as ether, or they have referred to as spinning energy, or energy of the vacuum. And that concept was given by uh, uh, a guy that is very famous in biology and electrochemistry called Nernst, Walter Nernst, in 1913. He described that the so-called energy of the vacuum was nothing else but energy, <laughs> not vacuum. And then a guy came later on whose name is Albert Einstein. And in 1921, he described something beautiful for which he got the Nobel Prize. He described it because he was using it before, but no one knew about it. And that's the photoelectric effect for which he was given the Nobel Prize, not for his theory of relativity that he became famous for. Later on, another guy called Otto Stern called this energy spinning energy. And that's because energy spins. Before that, we knew from chemistry a guy called Pauli, Linus Pauli, describes a principle where electrons start spinning in, up with the, in the same orbital but with different spins. One goes clockwise, the other one goes contraclockwise. And on Earth, we got the perfect example. 
now it's called the Coriolis effect. And that means in the northern hemisphere, things spin exactly the opposite as to the southern hemisphere. And if you have never seen the water going down the drain or a toilet, because we're too busy doing other things, just have a look at the seasons. When Australia has winter, in America we got summer. The longest day of the year in the world for um, the American country, I mean, for well, depending on where we are, that's relativity, depending on the position of the observer, what you see. We can call the longest day of the year the 21st of June, and the shortest happens in December. So that's when you got a lot of time, when you got darkness, if you live in the northern hemisphere and you're looking about winter. But if you go south, that's the longest day of the year, you know, and it's hot and people celebrate in Australia Christmas in July. Why? Because that's when it's really, really cold. And if you go to the snowy mountains, you can have even a white Christmas, but that is happening in July. So what I'm talking about now is how we perceive the world depending on where we are. And this is the position of the observer. So coming back to the dream and its implications, here we've got what people call a Markava. It's basically something where energy fits into one point. And the point is particular is this one here. In the human anatomy, that place belongs to the pancreas. And the pancreas is a very long organ. Yeah. And not only secretes insulin, as most people will tell you, it does a lot of other things. The Japanese, the Chinese, the Korean martial arts were, de were developed as the key, Tai Chi. And uh, you, con you got another one that I absolutely love, and that is the art of doing Aikido. And the key comes in there, Aikido. And when that happens, you got your energy here. This is what we call the solar plexus. This is where the energy radiates out and away from you. The energy comes through your head like this, spinning down through your pineal gland, then hits the amygdala, then hits the hypothesis, then hits your thyroid gland, then hits the thymus, and then it gets to the pancreas. All these are glands. But that energy wo works and goes in, in such a way that it's spinning this way. By the time it gets to the pancreas, it changes direction, and now it's going to go out the other way. So you can ground yourself on your feet, and you can be enlightened on your head. And when that happens, you've got this amazing flow of energy that starts forming a vortex. And those vortices basically make up what we call the, the symbol of infinity. It's an eight. So its constant flow goes like this. And this is the dance of life. What I call the symphony of love is life. Because you are making hearts with that. And this came out of that dream. You might see the hearts right here. And one is red or pink, the other one is blue. One is up, the other one is down. The fact that this is not up and down, it just depends on where you're looking at it from. We've been told that the shortest distance between two points it's a straight line. And we have been deceived, the same as we've been deceived by people saying that we got ten fingers, because we don't have ten fingers. We only have five. If you don't believe me, show me the other ten. Where are the ten? No ten, it's only five. This is called pentameric symmetry. Right at the top we got a number nine. This is a triangle. This is actually coming from a guy called Mark Rodin. And Marco Rodin is amazing because he has this coil that represents expansion. At the same time, we got contraction. So you got two, two op the, uh, mutually exclusive events that you wouldn't confuse one with the other because one is the absence of the other. And we can talk about happiness being the absence of sadness and sadness being the absence of happiness. We can talk about light and to call it is the light is the absence of darkness and darkness is the absence of light. So when one is missing, the other one shines like a rocket. And this is exactly that. We've got two numbers. One nine is there, the, on the other nine is here. So if we were to believe that theory or that mathematic equation that is ax plus by plus c equals zero, we got a straight line in there. And when we got a straight line, people call it, that's, the, uh, that's basically what 
binds one point with the other, and that's the shortest distance. And that's not true. Because what we can do is we live in a three-dimensional tri world, not in a flat world like we have made, been made believe. <laughs> because in the paper, everything looks flat. But in real life, everything has three dimensions. That, that is the width, the length, and, and the height. So because we are in a tridimensional sphere, we are not in a circle. We don't have a square, we got a cube. We don't have a triangle, we got a pyramid. So when you have these, it's very easy to see that that argument about the straight line being the shortest distance between two points is rendered completely useless. Because we can do this. There's the number nine, that's the number nine. We can basically marry them and put them together like that. And now one is on top of the other. And when you got them like that, now they stay together like that. And now the only way they can move, I cannot move my hand any longer that way. So if I want the point that is underneath to come up and this one to come down, there's only one thing that I need to do. I need to spin it, spin it. And now I'm the one that was up now is down, the one that was down now is up. And the planet and the cycles revolve against that. So we got our ups and our downs, and our ups and our downs, and that's the process of life. We are energy. We are not, um, uh, not just a bunch of bones and muscles put together working in perfect synchrony because we got about a trillion cells, trillions of trillions. We talk about anywhere between 50 to 100 trillion cells that make up the human body. The fact is that we are far greater than that. We are a community and we're a whole multiverse, not a universe within our own right. And the habitants of our multiverse is not us, it's the microbiome microorganisms that are at, at numbers for in a proportion of 10 to 1. For every one of your cells, you got 10 microbes. And that makes a huge difference into the way we look at the human body, because now we don't have to fight bacteria nor fungi. We need to make friends with them, because they are helping us to live the way we live. In biochemistry, we talk about essential amino acids, essential fatty acids. And this, the definition of essential is that we need them, but we cannot produce them. And yet they are vital for our life. Who produces them? Are we taking them out from the food that we eat? We don't. They are produced by these amazing, amazing organisms called the microbiome. And they are the ones who are feeding us the vitamins and the amino acids that we need in order for us to do what we need to do and that is for our cells to be able to produce something we call a protein. They got the coding in there that is given by the micro mi microbes to them so that we can translate that information that and make it happen. All that is part of the app. And this is so beautiful because the energy that we can send across comes with three things that are vital for any system to work. The intention, the purpose, and the significance. When you got these three and they are coherent, that means they are in harmony. You get an informational flow that matches and goes to every boundary in this multiverse. And the multiverse doesn't have boundaries, therefore it's eternal. The app can be found in, the, in a website that we got is cellwellbeing.com and uh, soon there will be a vitalapp.com. Um, we have put this so that everyone in, on the planet can have access to this because all they, can, all they need to do is download it. And then there are four different prompts that can be used. One is for water, one is for alcoholic beverages, the other one is for hot yeah. uh, liquids such as soups, such as coffees and teas, and the other one is for water. And we're made of water. Paper is made of water because it's made of cellulose, and cellulose is a carbohydrate, carbo, carbon hydrose water. So we can structure with the sound and light the wonderful waves that come from the micro and the macrocosmos and entangle them with us, the way this entangles a nine with a nine. And when we do that, we benefit from whatever is there, and we don't need to have any preconception as to what is wrong with us. That doesn't matter. The fact is that it's fixed with energy, vibration, and light. 
for me, is the people okay. um, more than the topics we present. Because we're here for a reason, not just because we want to see ourselves in a paper or in a photograph or nothing like that. We're here because we all love water and we're passionate about it because water has amazing properties that we haven't even begun to explore. We're just touching the very surface and the, the possibility of interacting with other scientists that are driven by their passion allows us to all interact together and form wonderful friendships. So every time we come here, we don't come to a conference, we come to see old friends and feel we are at home with a beautiful family. And that's what I come here for. And then we can share what we do. And we, we've been up to, uh, I, this is my third year, and ever since the beginning, I had a clash with the people that were here, from the organizing committee to the scientists that were around. Um, without any knowing anyone, I make a stylish, complete report. The following year, I came back again, and things got a little bit better. I had other things to show, and this is the third time. And now, we had an, a wonderful experience last night, where everything that happened was such a blessing, because we all joined together as if we were one, and we were little kids playing with water and energy. So that was a lot of fun. And this is what it's all about, having fun in your life and giving your heart to the things that you are and the things that you do. And once you put that, passion begins to flow, and that's contagious.